So in this video, we're talking about a proposal that me and a friend have come up with for a gene editing cure for HIV. But before we get started on the proposal, I want to start with a story from two years ago. I was on a plane to Frankfurt and I was watching Bohemian Rhapsody in a plane, just like everybody else watching a movie. And I had never heard of Queen previous to that, so I searched up Freddie Mercury when I landed in Frankfurt. And I found out that, unfortunately, he died of AIDS. And I followed my curiosity, did a little bit more research on AIDS and HIV, and found out that a lot of big celebrities died because of AIDS in the 80s and the 90s. Now, I went and looked to see if there are any vaccines or cures for HIV. And it blew my mind to find out that it's been 30 years and still there is no vaccine or cure for HIV. HIV is not over though. In 2019, 38 million people were globally living with HIV. In that same year, 690,000 people died because of AIDS-related complications. And 1.7 million people became newly infected with HIV. Although Sub-Saharan Africa is currently the hardest hit region in the world by HIV because 68% of all the global cases are in Sub-Saharan Africa, the United States is still affected by HIV as well. In 2018, 1.2 million people were living with HIV in the United States. And there were an estimated 36,400 new cases that year. So the problem of HIV is still prevalent in North America in 2021. And we still don't have a vaccine or a cure for it. So we need to find a solution right away. The only current treatment for HIV is antiretroviral therapy, otherwise known as ART. And it is accessed by 26 million people around the world by the end of June 2020. ART is a medication regimen composed of 17 drugs in order to stop the replication process of the virus, and reduce the viral load as well as reduce transmission. ART needs to be started right after diagnosis and continue for the rest of life. Due to ART, between 2010 and 2018, HIV cases were reduced by 23%. However, ART is not a cure and it does not free the body from the long-term consequences of HIV. ART costs between $1,080 to $2,700 per month for a patient's whole life, which is quite expensive. Some problems of ART are that they might have short-term or long-term toxic effects, and minimal or full control over viral replication does not stop the consequences of HIV on the immune system. Studies show that patients who have been following long-term consistent ART regimens are still exposed to immune dysfunctions and they have a higher risk for various non-AIDS related complications, including heart, bone, liver, kidney, and neurocognitive diseases. But there is hope. Early April 2021, a study was published by Nunez et al. In this study, they highlighted the discovery of a new CRISPR technology called CRISPR-Off. Unlike the current CRISPR-Cas9 technology, which cuts the DNA and makes double-stranded breaks, CRISPR-Off allows us to just silence genes or even turn them back on. Once those genes are silenced, they can no longer affect the body. The technology consists of a single dead Cas9 fusion protein and a single guide RNA that establishes DNA methylation. This allows researchers to control gene expression. And the cool part is that unlike CRISPR-Cas9, CRISPR-Op is reversible. The epigenetic changes were found to be heritable. So the changes made by CRISPR-Op ended up staying the way that they were even after cell division and differentiation. So now that such an incredible technology like CRISPR-Off exists, our team proposes a cure for HIV using CRISPR-Off to silence the proviral HIV-1 DNA. 
Our hypothesis is that although the HIV DNA remains in the host cell, the DNA is silent, so it can no longer affect the body of the infected individual. Essentially, this should cure the patient of HIV. Our hypothesis is based on a similar study by Dash et al. 2019. In this study, AAV9 delivered CRISPR Cas9 was used to cut out the proviral HIV1 DNA from helper T cells in the lymph node, liver, lung, brain, spleen, and gut of humanized mice. This experiment was done alongside the administration of laser ART, which is a type of ART with higher inhibitory effects than the standard ART. The researchers were able to cure 30% of the mice using both laser ART and CRISPR-Cas9. Reduce the chance of dangerous mutations caused by random DNA repair, we propose the use of CRISPR-OFF instead. Using CRISPR-OFF will make this experiment much safer in humans. But given that CRISPR-OFF is such a new technology, there are a few ambiguities in our proposal that needs to be addressed with a preclinical study. These ambiguities are, will the silencing of the proviral DNA cure the infected individual of the effects of HIV-1, which is viramia, on their body and stop the progression towards AIDS? Second, does laser art have to be continued after CRISPR-OFF treatment? How many doses of the CRISPR-OFF therapy need to be administered until all the infected helper T cells are treated? What should be the time interval between these doses to ensure durable memory of gene silencing? Because our proposal is so similar to the Dash et al. study, but instead we're using CRISPR-OFF, we will be using the Dash et al. 2019 methodology for our preclinical study. I will now outline what the preclinical study will look like. We want to use the sample groups of humanized mice in three rounds of the experiment. Let's start with the first round of mice. Humanized helper T cells are infected with HIV outside of the mice in the lab and then they're injected into three cohorts of mice. The first cohort receives just laser ART, the second cohort receives just CRISPR-OFF, the third cohort receives both laser ART and CRISPR-OFF. We are splitting the mice in three cohorts to monitor if laser ART needs to be administered during CRISPR-OFF treatment and after. CRISPR-OFF is guided to the CD4 cells with a single guide RNA targeting the LTR1 and GAGD. The viral vector used is AAV9 because it has robust transduction efficiencies in multiple tissues, including the central nervous system, which is a significant putative reservoir for HIV-1. AAV9 is delivered in vivo to infected organs. They will most likely be lymph node, liver, lung, brain, spleen, and gut. We will then test the first round of mice to see if the HIV DNA is being expressed. To do the testing, we will use ultra-sensitive, semi-nested, real-time qPCR with primers and probes designed for detection of HIV-1 GAG and then confirmed by digital droplet PCR, otherwise known as DDPCR. In the second round, the cured CD4 cells from round 1 of mice are then transferred to round 2 of 3 cohorts of non-infected mice to see if the new mice will express the HIV-1 DNA or not. In the third round, the experiment from round one of mice is repeated to see if the CRISPR-OFF will once again fully silence viral DNA and to determine how many doses of CRISPR-OFF need to be administered and with what time interval should they be administered until no HIV-1 DNA is expressed and there is durable memory of gene silencing in round three of mice. But how does ART compare with this CRISPR-OFF solution? Well, we can't really compare them because ART is not a cure, it is a treatment. Although CRISPR-OFF does not remove the HIV DNA from the patient, it does stop replication and viral activities of HIV-1 in the host cell. As a result, the infected patient is free from any symptoms and risks of HIV on their body. A 30% success rate is the baseline for our preclinical study. We got this number from the Dash et al. 2019 study. The experiment by Dash et al. 2019 had a 30% success rate. 
We predict that this number can be even higher because CRISPR-Off silenced SNRPN GFP in 80% of transfected cells and HIST 2H2BE in 90% of transfected cells after at least 50 days. Therefore, a 30% success rate is just the baseline for our preclinical study. Now let's take a look at clinical trials and FDA approval for our proposal. There are various phases for clinical trials before FDA approval. Phase zero of a clinical trial is done with a very small number of people, usually fewer than 15. Investigators use a very small dose of medication to make sure it isn't harmful to humans before they start using it in higher doses for later phases. If the medication acts differently than expected, the investigators will likely do some additional preclinical research before deciding whether to continue the trial. During phase one of a clinical trial, investigators spent several months looking at the effects of the medication on about 20 to 80 people who have no underlying health conditions. This phase aims to figure out the highest dose humans can take without serious side effects. Investigators monitor participants very closely to see how their bodies react to the medication during this phase. According to the FDA, approximately 70% of medications move on to phase 2. Phase 2 of a clinical trial involves several hundred participants who are living with the condition that the new medication is meant to treat. They're usually given the same dose that was found to be safe in the previous phase. Investigators monitor participants for several months or years to see how effective the medication is and to gather some information about any side effects it might cause. The FDA est estimates that about 33% of medications move on to phase 3. Phase 3 of a clinical trial usually involves up to 3,000 participants who have the condition that the new medication is meant to treat. Trials in this phase can last for several years. The purpose of phase 3 is to evaluate how the new medication works in comparison to existing medications for the same condition. To move forward with the trial, investigators need to demonstrate that the medication is at least as safe and effective as existing treatment options. To do this, investigators use a process called randomization. This involves randomly choosing some participants to receive the new medication and others to receive an existing medication. Roughly 25-30% to 30 of medications move on to phase 4. Phase 4 clinical trials happen after the FDA has approved medication. This phase involves thousands of participants and can last for many years. Investigators use this phase to get more information about the medication's long-term safety, effectiveness, and any other benefits. Now let's take a look at ART cost in comparison with a CRISPR-Off therapy cost. The treatment for HIV currently consists of ART and regular doctor visits. The treatment per month can cost between $1,800 to $4,500 for the rest of your life. ART medications make up 60% of those costs. Currently, gene therapies are at the very, very early stages, which is why they're quite expensive. Usually, most of them are between $2.1 million. Now, let's take a look at the cost for phase 1, 2, and 3 of clinical trials. Phase 1 costs $4 million. Phase 2 costs $13 million. And phase 3 costs $20 million. As we said before, gene therapies are quite expensive right now. Over time, this cost will be reduced so what are the outcomes that we want to achieve by this solution? Given the current cost of gene therapies, we estimate that only people in rich and developed countries can receive this therapy. In the United States alone, we estimate that at least 360,000 people can be cured. This will bring down the urgency of the HIV epidemic in the world and also it will remove the additional treatment costs in these rich countries. So the fundings that were previously going towards treatment in rich countries can now go towards ART treatment in poor or under-resourced regions. So an indirect effect of a cure in rich countries would be that resources from 
rich countries can go towards poor countries where there are more cases and less resources. Considering that there are no gene therapies on the commercial market right now, we estimate that the development and FDA approval for our solution will take 10 years or more. But the long-term benefits of such a solution will be worth it. If another retroviral epidemic were to happen in the future, we would have the technology for a cure prepared because we already have the technology for an HIV cure. To conclude, HIV off goes beyond the 30-year HIV epidemic and introduces hope for future epidemics. So what do you say? Will you help us cure HIV?